Hi, um, today we're going to talk about um, Linux memory and this, the problems associated with huge pages. Um, huge pages in Linux are extremely important to use. The more my team actually actually looks at them and systems built without using huge pages, uh, we're more convinced that you must use huge pages and we do appreciate that they're difficult to configure. They take a bit of time, a little bit of planning and strategizing and figuring how much memory you want to allocate to huge pages and then you have to reboot the systems actually to get the huge memory, page memory. But in, the, in reality, we're just finding that the systems are better behaved, more stable, more predictable. Um, this in itself warrants the use of using huge pages. Um, a lot of people ask me, what, what are Linux huge pages? Well, uh, conventional pages in Linux are actually quite small. Um, and what actually happens is, is that the shared memory region of your S SGA um, is becoming an ever-increasing piece of memory. And when a user process connects to the SGA, they have to map between their virtual address space and the physical memory, which is where the shared memory is actually located. And this mapping set of entries, um, or often called TLBs, uh, are pieces of memory uh, that are taken out of the Linux kernel. Now, if the pages are quite small, you can imagine the number of these entries is quite massive, and they occupy quite a bit of memory themselves. Now, the whole concept of huge pages is make the page bigger, so you actually have less TLB entries, and so you allocate less memory to TLB entries, and so you can actually basically map in the SGA without doing as much work in the Linux kernel and taking less Linux kernel memory. And whilst this seems all very complicated and very computer science-y like, it's actually not that difficult to understand when you sit down with the mechanics of it. But rather than sort of give you a lecture on the basics of uh, Linux memory, we just actually would like to show the impact on systems that have been configured with huge pages and those that have been configured without huge pages so you can see the pathological race conditions. And like many real world performance demos that you're able to see, we built this demo is because we kept on seeing it and we didn't like to get on conference calls and complete, explain to people why they should do it and it became a debatable item. Uh, as far as real world performance is concerned, huge pages should be used at all times. Um, hopefully these demos will help explain it to you and understand what goes on when you run out of memory on Linux and perhaps you know we can uh, educate you and perhaps we can save you from taking a system outage. Okay, so on the demo here, um, we can see we have two systems, one built with huge pages and one built with conventional pages. And what we've done is break up the memory regions in these middle sectors where we've seen the pink um, and the green stripes to give you an indication of where the memory has been allocated. Now I've just increased the connections to nearly 3,400 um, on both systems. And the thing to notice is that whilst on the, on the huge pages there's been an increase in the pink area, amount of memory allocated by the process space, there's still a, f a certain amount of free memory on the system. Now when I do conventional, I haven't used huge pages, you'll know that you'll see, notice the bump in the pink area, but what we'll also see another bump in this green area. And those are these page table translation pages I spoke about earlier, and the memory being allocated inside the Linux kernel associated with those th those pages. Now, the other thing to also learn about is we don't allocate those entries until the shared memory is being referenced. So just connecting the, all the people to the database will not necessarily allocate all those entries. They have to connect to the database and start doing work. So as you notice that as we run this workload, the amount of free memory is diminishing and diminishing all the time and this area of thick, ever becoming thicker green line. So when I started and had all the connections in, the page tables was 13.7 gigabytes. Now at this point in time, it's got to 27 gigabytes and it's ever increasing. So if we actually have to look at the conventional memory model and we see how much memory is free, 
you'll notice that the amount of memory free is dropping all the time. We're not seeing that on the huge page case, it's just sitting there statically. Okay, and at this point in time, you'll notice that we're eating memory and we're down to about 1.2 gigabytes of free memory. Now, I know in about a second, at this point in time, we're going to trigger a point where we run into memory starvation. And at this point in time, the Linux page daemon is likely to wake up and start having to swap sort of pieces of memory out. And we'll see this manifested in a format that basically we start to see the performance degrading. And we're starting to see this bit, the pink line of the system degrading to the point that the performance almost dies. But you notice we're still keeping the CPU busy and it's starting to race as the page daemon does some work. And now we're starting to get into a stable of instability where suddenly it's reclaiming memory and suddenly and it's able to run a bit and then it runs out of memory, the page daemon grows crazy, the throughput drops and it's unable to reign. We're in an unstable situation. We can see this W-shaped curve up here where the system is bouncing between stability and instability. And the more it runs, the more page table entries we take, and then it renders it unstable. Then the page daemon kicks in and tries to claim back more memory. So you can see that we're bouncing between stability and instability all the time, and to the point that the throughput sometimes is zero, and sometimes it's not zero. But this is what happens when we run out of memory on Linux. Sometimes it's more pathological, and if I was to actually increase the number of user processes just a little bit more, I probably could get to the state where we're continually swapping memory out, and we've driven the system into the ground at this point in time. Interesting to note that the huge page case has hardly changed at all. There's very little change on the huge pages, it's just remained stable and now we've driven the system completely into the ground and then it's reclaimed, it's got back to a one gigabyte of memory and it's coming back to life again. Likewise, I can remove a few processes and free up a lot of memory and literally the performance comes back. The problem is, is we just cannot predict when things are going to go stable or unstable when we run out of memory. And so if on your Linux systems you're getting periods where you've got a large number of connections, a large SGA, and then the system just periodically appears to just stall, you're probably running out of memory and it's starting to swap. And then it may recover itself and then the system looks great. But you can't predict when it takes place. The other thing is just connecting to the database doesn't necessarily mean we'll take the memory. We have to touch, start touching enough pages to take it out. So dropping the process count in this place, I've freed up the system and now we're nearly at seven gigabytes free memory by itself, but we're still continuing to eat memory even though we freed up memory. And it will continue to eat it um, as these processes are running. You see it's starting to diminish again. And again, I can literally add a few thousand process a few hundred processes again. Which will cause the memory to get allocated again. You can see the thin green line that we freed up the memory here will be diminishing very, very rapidly. And we can knock the system over again. Down to 3.4 gigabytes of memory, rapidly falling again, 3.2. And here we've killed it again. And as you can see, we can just literally run out of memory and the erraticness of the pink line and the spike in the pink CPU. You can see that the page daemon is coming in, trying to free up memory, and we're seeing memory getting freed up. And then the performance comes back. And then because the performance comes back, we touch more pages, and then the page demon has to kick back in again. 